Energy very much in the news right now. Today, the U.S. begins mandatory emissions caps at the International Climate Conference going on in Bali. And in Congress, the energy bill is likely to be stripped of its greenest provisions, namely that requirement that uh, utilities generate 15 percent of power from renewables. And it looks like that the tax provisions there that would uh, increase taxes on the oil companies take away the tax uh, break they've had in the past, the tax credits, that's coming out as well. The question is, is the U.S. doing the right thing to protect business and the economy, or are we misguided on the economic benefits of going green? Joining us with their thoughts, Dan Weiss, Senior Fellow and Director of Climate Strategy at the Center for American Progress, and Max Schultz, who's Senior Fellow at the Manhattan Institute. Dennis Neal's with me on this one as well. Dan, what do you think? Let me start with the utilities, the renewable provision there. You know, a company like Southern Company says they're not opposed to increasing the renewables uh, that they get their energy from. They just want some flexibility on where they get that from. Are, are, was, was the energy bill in the right idea, but just the wrong way of implementing it? No, the energy bill had the right idea. A renewable electricity standard would force utilities to generate 15% of their electricity from the wind, sun, geothermal, biomass, and other renewable energy sources. Already half the states have one. What's interesting to me is that all these uh, southern company and others say, well, we don't have renewable electricity in the south. Well, last time I checked, they're part of the Sun Belt, and they, you think there'd be potential for solar energy there. States like Georgia is a coastal state. They have a good source of wind energy. Right. So there's lots of possibilities. Right. I think this is more that Southern Company would just rather keep doing business the old-fashioned way rather than join into the green economic revolution. Max, what do you think? No, I, I think that it, it's right to get this provision out of the bill. It's a provision that if it were still in there, uh, would boost prices for consumers. Uh, it, would, it would shoot electricity prices through the roof. You know, it, it's funny to... to to look at these renewable portfolio standards, the state of California one, uh, where they're trying to get 20% of their uh, uh, electricity from renewable sources, can't hit it. It's hard to hit these targets. They're uneconomical. It's going to be a lot harder in places like the South. Dennis, you know, why is it that that if green energy is such a great idea, if it's more efficient, if it's if it's cheaper, if it's better for the world, why is it that we need government fiat to force companies into doing it? This thought that Mr. Weiss said that they just want to do business the old way. Well, they won't do business the old way if the old way is less profitable than the new way. And it just seems that that uh, government shouldn't shouldn't necessarily be forcing this on companies, especially if it turns out to need all kind of government subsidies to make it cheap so that it's an attractive alternative at all. Instead, let's let the science and the technology catch up to it so that it is a cheaper option, and, and that will drive it, and no government order will be needed. What do you think, guys? Yeah. Well, yeah. first of all, it is a cheaper option. It's estimated that a national renewable electricity standard would save uh, tens of billions of dollars for consumers on lower electricity bills by the time it's implemented in 2020. Second, we have leaders like Florida Governor Charlie Crist, who just canceled a coal-fired power plant and instead is going to build a solar power plant in Florida. So the idea that you can't do it in the southeast is just flat out wrong. I'm looking at some of the other provisions in here. Uh, you know, all the attention has gone the tax credits uh, to the oil companies, which will, will remain now apparently, and the, uh, the renewable energy portion of that. But this is a very big bill, Max. I mean, is there something you like about this bill right here? This is a very big bill, and to be perfectly honest with you, I can't find one provision in it that I think Not that, a that would be good for the economy. I mean, this is a bill which is, uh, the way it was unveiled last week, uh, is going to boost prices for, uh, for gasoline. It's going to boost prices for electricity. So it's you're saying going green would be bad for the economy right now? Well, it, I, no, I think that they're, the, you know, going green, the, the, that's a very wide, broad statement, but, uh, but this particular bill is filled with provisions which are just going to raise prices and aren't going to do anything to, uh, uh, to guarantee America's long-term energy security. A, a $3,000 tax credit for plug-in hybrid vehicles. They want to make uh, uh, the batteries for hybrid electric cars more... Uh, efficient and, and longer lasting. I mean, what's wrong with the provision like that one, for well, example? Well, hybrids are great, and you know what? The market is actually pushing these along. It, we don't need government to, to, to mandate it. The, the government mandates, and this bill is full of government mandates of all stripes, uh, it, only distort markets and raise prices. Uh, hybrids make sense because the market has proved that, uh, that they make sense, and they're going to in the future, but it's not because of government. Dan, are we just being too ambitious? Is there too much in here, too many moving parts and pieces that should be broken out and, and assessed by themselves? 
No, this is a package that will help us uh, jumpstart the economy and actually help fend off any recession that might be growing because there's lots of provisions in the bill that will help boost jobs in the renewable fuels industry, in the renewable electricity industry, when it comes to making cleaner cars, that's going to help create jobs. So all of these things are going to be a net winner for the economy. And for an investor's perspective, the next wave of uh, big investment ought to be in clean energy. And as you know, many... Uh, Silicon Valley venture capitalists are investing heavily in renewable fuels and clean energy technologies because that's all going to be part of our green economic revolution. All yeah. right. Dan hey, Weiss, Max Schultz got to go. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll check back with you in a moment here. We'll come back. We're on the half hour.